Thanks, Kelly. That's right. An estimated 70,000 truckers would be impacted by this law as two-thirds of the drivers who move containers in California ports are independently owned and operated. At the Port of Oakland alone, more than 2,100 trucks go through the terminals each day. And the conflict has led the Oakland Shoreman Union, the ILWU, elect not to enter the terminal, citing safety concerns because of going through the crowds. And this labor shortage is the reason why the ports are closed, because there is no labor. The impact of the shutdown is also showing up on the U U.S. supply chain heat map by CNBC, which tracks information of various logistics data companies. It's a sea of red, Kelly, and the time the containers are sitting at the ports is huge. Check it out. Because if every day the port is closed, it takes at least two days for the congestion to clear up. Now, also, check out this chart from Project 44. This shows the amount of time an import container is waiting to get picked up. Right now, it's over 16 and a half days. Last week, it was over 15 days. And marine traffic has also identified vessels diverting away from Oakland to other ports, such as Long Beach. But it's not just the Oakland ports seeking, uh, seeing this turmoil. Last week, there was a small protest of the ports of both LA and Long Beach. And there could be another one soon, as sources tell me they are frustrated with the response from the governor's office. And the impact of last week's protests were not as severe thanks to the size of those ports. But remember, any trucker disruption would slow things down and add to the existing congestion. And remember, the ports are still plagued with the rail issues where containers there are waiting at least 11 days. No, and you bring up Governor Newsom, who's obviously eyeing the White House at some point. This will be a major testing ground for him. Uh, you mentioned moving to some of the East Coast ports. What's the status there? What's the latest? Well, we're continuing to see, you know, the, the vessels um, moving over to the East Coast, and we're seeing them increase. Now, let's take another look at that heat map. Um, back where we're seeing where Savannah, they're seeing a backup of 36 vessels waiting over at the port anchored. That's $1.2 million in trade floating out at sea right now, and that's half of the month's volume of what Savannah normally handles. But marine traffic tells me rerouting ships to other ports like Charleston may not solve the problem, but rather create a ping pong congestion effect. And what we need to look for next then are the ocean carriers going to start canceling port arrivals because of the congestion. And is this just a U.S. issue because of the California gig law and some uh, of those idiosyncrasies? What about Europe? How are things over there looking? Well, as you know, we've been following Europe for quite some time, and the labor strife, of course, has always been the big story, but now it's the hot weather. And that hot weather has decreased levels in the inland waterways. And sources are telling me this is impacting the movement of grain, like wheat, fertilizer, coal, and animal products. Grain prices, as we all know, have already increased as a result of Russia's war on Ukraine, and these delays are not going to help. Take a look at the heat map. The barge operators on the Rhine have had to cut down on their max capacity of payloads so vessels don't get stuck in the water. And on top of that, the labor strikes have crippled German ports, as you can see. They're still facing a two-and-a-half-month backup in containers, and there could be another strike as early as August 24th. Well, a good reminder, we saw downgrades even just this morning on some consumer products companies citing these ongoing freight costs and, and challenges, and this is exactly where this is uh, stemming from. Lorianne, thanks. Keep us posted. Thanks. Our Lorianne LaRocco.